Okay, we are live. Have at it. Howdy there, folks. Welcome to Retsu Talk, episode 62, coming to you live from ND3. Slowbeef, what's up, man? Hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing just fine. I couldn't help but notice there was this uh, competing conference, this uh, little-known thing called E3. Have you heard I've, of that? I've been reading the live blogs about it on my favorite gaming magazine, Forbes magazine. They're showing some footage right now of like cars spinning around and all that jazz. We've seen it before, so we are here to compete and win. Absolutely. We to, are the new video games. E to heck with E3, I say. That I, is correct. I've had enough I've had enough call a battlefield or whatever the heck it is. You've seen the guns, you've seen the cars, you've seen the scandally class uh, dressed people, but in here we're talking about the indie games. Wait, the games are for real people, for real cool people. Oh, okay. <laughs> are you a real cool people? I hope so. They they hyped us up enough. I hope I hope that we're cool enough. Yeah, for I that, couldn't but... help but no, I saw this thing in their stream where they said uh, at six thirty Pacific time a grand surprise, and I was like, ooh, what's that? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and then, then, no, they, I, then it was I, like... I was I was personally let down. And so I'm sure the uh, the people watching this, listening to this, are equally disappointed. And so I'd like to open with an apology, as most good talks do. As, as disappointed as they are with um, the Microsoft E3 conference thing, I couldn't watch any of it. I'm sorry. Yes, you were at work. There was well, there was a Microsoft thing. There was uh -huh. an Ubisoft thing, and there was a EA thing earlier today. Oh, okay. No, very nice. Kind okay. of a weird, hard thing to pronounce. I don't know why they would brand themselves that way. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a weird company, honestly. You know. So, slowly, what do you know about this in D three though? This is where the real the real things are happening right here. Um, I know nothing about it. I was hoping you could tell me everything about it. Oh, I am the person <laughs> to <laughs> believe Just me. I I'll, I'll, can I tell you something though about that other conference though. Yes. Um, I, I kind of wasn't kidding when I, I looked up E3 uh, live blog, and I was met with a bunch of blogs to say, this sucks, go watch in D3, of course. But um, I, I couldn't wait to hear that EA announced PGA Tour is now using the Frostbite 3 game engine to use super realistic golf courses. Thank you, Lord. Super realistic golf courses that have uh, battleships from the game Battlefield <laughs> coming onto the, this is true. Okay. Actual thing that happens. Imagine what you could do if you put that sort of imagination into golf in real life. I can't. Can I? Can I give you a real quote from this? This this god. This stupid god. Uh, this conference. Yeah. Ahem, I quote. This is golf without limits. How do you say not to say it yourself afterwards? <laughs> golf without well, limits. Golf has limits. It's called the par. How do you go to E three <laughs> with a damn golf? A darn golf game. A damn golf. Well, it's. Um, sports. Oh, uh, that's true. Sports. Oh, well. Are there any indie but, sports uh, games? There must be, right? Think about like, it. Um, you could make a new sport and have it, you, indie sports. Golf. How come no uh, one's gotten sim into that? Goat simulator counts, right? As a sport? Yep. Like goat punting? I, let's, let's be honest here. I think, I think it was meant to be some sort of sport anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sports. What are, you, what are you looking forward to in the indie scene? In the indie scene, well, they've been showing a number of. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we appear to have a audio dropout. We are working on fixing that right now. Yeah, so hold on. What did you guys all do? I guess that's uh test test. Okay. There you go. Are we back? Yeah, beat us. You're back. Are we? Yeah. Okay. Hi, folks. Sorry about that. Uh, the man, the indie man, shut us down for a moment, and you were all probably delighted by that. But unfortunately, we're back. I, I was told I am not allowed to say disparaging things about PGA Tour golf is the problem. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> see the moment you put down the golf, that's when the hammer comes down. I know. I'm I'm sorry. I love golf. There should be indie golf. <laughs> I'm looking I'm looking in chat now and I I see a whole lot of dark souls mentioned that we were shut down by the man, but we they they gave us a second chance. The video game Dark Souls mentioned that we were... No 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 no, whole lot of dark souls. A whole lot of dark souls. Oh, that's I love which, that indie game. That's a good one. Which by the way is not a real game. Yeah. That's what they're calling I the thought, DLC thought, actually. Thought, it's a whole lot of Dark Souls coming out. <laughs> and then in parentheses, not a real game. Wow, I feel so powerful here. Whenever I say anything, some text pops up on the screen from somewhere. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> so that let's have our first great. talking point of Rutsu Talk, Indie Golf. <laughs> why isn't there more of it? Who That's hasn't all... made Indie Golf yet and why? That's all I have, by the way. Is that... <laughs> why isn't there more of it? <laughs> That's That's kind of all I've got right now as well. So mm -hmm. I guess we should say thank you to the uh, kind folks at Indie Three for inviting us to uh, to do this, to do this I, nebulous task that we don't know exactly what we're doing, but we're doing I, it. I'll tell you, I I was uh, I was online at the Port Authority today. It, I was almost not going to get home in time for this. I was worried, but you know, it was an indie race against time. More or less, yeah. It's a, it's that last minute drama that really makes it tense and such, you know. That's absolutely right. Should, should we explain to who we are for some of the people who are like, who the hell are these people? <laughs> you mean everyone? Yeah, more or So, uh, I am Diabetes on the internet, and my friend here is Slow Beef on the internet. Hello. And we are a uh, internet talking duo called Red Supre. Mm-hmm. And we started by, uh, we found these things on the internet called Let's Plays. In fact, yeah. Slow Beef, you may not no. know this, created the first one. No, stop it. Oh, okay. Yeah, whatever. Um, no, it, yeah, we'd, we'd had a few on the Something Awful forums, and we saw it got spread to YouTube. And then, you know when something spreads outside of, you, of your reach, like, and it's a few cousins removed, and then you don't know what the hell it is? Happens to me all the time. Yeah. That kind of happened. So we we sort of um, started overdubbing the let's plays and and making fun of people and stuff, and people sort of liked it. And then we kind of extended out to like. Well, we became hypocrites. We ourselves grew onto YouTube more. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. And that is now where we primarily function. <laughs> right. So how's that for irony? Well, to be fair, you know, I mean, let's face it, something awful is dead. Yeah. But as and, soon but, as uh, I left. Uh, but we also, we don't just make fun of Let's Plays. In fact, we don't even do that that much anymore. We also no. find weird, quirky, old video games, play and make fun of them. We've got like 700 plus videos, I think, at this point. YouTube.com slash Retsupre. Very easy to spell if you were just here <laughs> listening to this. So just type, just type that in. R-E-T-S-U-P-U-R-A-E. We are not marketing wizards is the thing. <laughs> hey, uh, Voice of God guy, put Retsupre on the screen. Help the kind people out. <laughs> if I can make you put indie golf on here, I should be able to make you do anything. <laughs> but, I, don't, um, I don't. I don't think he's listening to you anymore. No. I think we're on our own. <laughs> no, only you and me are highlighted in yellow here on the screen. Hashtag indie <laughs> three is grayed out, which means it's dead. Uh, oh God! I don't know. Um, it's no. He's back. He's saying not anything. All right. <laughs> oh okay. God, so. That's, so that's our, Who the hell is this? That's our jump in moment. Uh, all right. Hey guys, <laughs> thank you for coming Hello. to the stream. Thanks. Thank you so much, Slow Beef and Diabetes, for coming. Uh, this is TJ Thomas, Tron Maximum on Twitter, Joy Lancer developer, and the person who organized this uh, event that you see here, right here. This thing, this thing really Howdy. blew up, man. Good job. Yeah, it is. It is Yo, gone. Congrats. Grown really fast. 
Okay, when you now introduced yourself, I thought you were implying that we did something wrong and that we were in trouble. Yes, you're you're, you're both <laughs> very much in trouble. <laughs> Running this thing, you guys did I, terrible. I heard that damn trouble. slow beef. Okay. <laughs> I I thought you were jumping in like you. Uh, did you say something about indie golf again? <laughs> yeah, didn't mean to put it down. I'm sorry. It's, um, it's okay. We oh. you. <laughs> we, right. we at indie three are a very forgiving bunch. Mm hmm. And now, now that I am here officially, we can start moving our other guests in. We've got like what five more people that are ready to jump in. All right, here we go. Please. <laughs> there, there's one. Hold on to your butts. Let's party. Oh my god. Let's do it. What the heck? Yeah. So, uh, love everybody here. You're all great. Thank you so much for getting this organized. Everyone, please introduce yourselves for the lovely people and for the lovely guests that we have. Yeah. That's hint. Anybody? Go on. Okay, I'm not going first. Okay. I'll go first. Um, no, I've already went. Do you want? Okay, so I, I guess I can go first. Um, I mean, I introduced myself earlier today, if you saw it, but my name is Lonnie Stewart. Um, I'm a critic. I do games sometimes, but I mostly write about games, talk about games, do OPs about games, so I mostly do a lot of critical work. Um, run the arcade review. Exam experience the games, and I'm doing in D3. And we actually just finished our work through stream panel at 9:30. We finished that, and it was really fun. We had a great time. So, real quick, yeah. criticize this. Criticize this stream. Um, this I'm stream. professional. <laughs> it, 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 Go on, I'm listening. No, I'm well, sorry. <laughs> no, it's fine. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. No, 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 don't don't worry about it. I mean, all all things considered, <laughs> like we put this together in four days, so no matter what, it's good. <laughs> that's that's just we that's just the way I see it. Always fall back on that. <laughs> <laughs> if all else fails, hey, we did we, we we did one day. If it goes well, it goes well. If it goes badly, hey, it took four days to put together. <laughs> so, there you go. Get off our fucking backs, all right. And if it so goes it's, well, it's we can always say. If it goes well, we can always just say, hey, it only it took us. We did it in four days. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's um, just win. It's win win all around. <laughs> Sorry, before I rudely interrupted you, though, you, uh, you're introducing yourself. Uh, me? yes. One of us. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. <laughs> it was me. I'll, I'll, I'll go. Yeah. I'm Jeb Wrench. I, I write for IndieHaven.com, and we are providing interview coverage for Indie 3 this year, and hopefully other years, if we have more. When we have more. Nice. I guess I could go next. Sure. Go ahead. Uh, I'm Zoe Quinn. I am an independent game developer, um, probably known best for Jeff Goldblum's staring contest. I mean, Depression Quest. Um, <laughs> I mean, I mean, Busey. I also, uh, Busey. Oh, my God. I'm so glad you left that running for like four days. Um, God bless I, fucking Indicate. Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I also do some community management and run game jams in addition to uh, being part of a biohacking lab and doing fire performance. So I'm just kind of a weirdo professionally. <laughs> Can I say the chat went a little nuts when you when you came into this? So I think even though this like whatever like you should have probably headlined it. Oh God! Th thanks for thanks for nothing. No, um, <laughs> so he is the big reveal. No, it is. Um, what do you call it? I I actually I uh I met you Zoe, at PAX uh this year and I like yeah. the, they were closing down in Expo Hall and I was like kind of sprinting and weaving through things you know like dodging stuff this story sounded so interesting when i thought it was in my head a minute ago but um yeah i made it Venus, help me out here no, um no, you're doing great. Really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it was like super cool that you uh came out and braved the very uh the very uppity enforcers who were like if you don't have an expo pass you need to leave like constantly oh yeah it's ridiculous. It's like one step i think below mall cop really but you know well that's when he pulls out the do you know who i am card <laughs> so. And I actually do have a card that says that is the thing. It is my business card. Mine but. just says scene and then a space for time to like a timestamp, so I can just leave a conversation. <laughs> nice. We'll I, uh, we'll just hear. All set. Who does that leave? Yeah, we almost have like a tic tac toe board going. Here, so. Uh, Nolan's not in conversation right now, so. Uh... Okay, I guess that's me. I'm yeah. the center circle, thank you. I'm like oh, Whoopi oh. Goldberg up in here. Oh my god. Hey, oh, introduce yourself. Uh, I, I don't need to introduce myself. Yeah, you do. I'm yes, just the do. host. Everyone All here right. does. That's why it's Indie 3 and not E3. 
I'm Solon. Yeah. I do a wide variety of things. Um, I do streams. I do Let's Plays. I organize and do critical Let's Play engagements. I teach at the University of Washington, uh, game studies <laughs> class, and we are doing a panel on Thursday uh, that's actually open to the public at the University of Washington where we're talking about critical Let's Plays. Um, that's it. That's what I got. So do, do you have for that. And I have green hair. Do you have any videos that I could talk over that you wouldn't mind? Oh, I have some terrible oh, ones, dude. Oh, no, I've got oh. some. I've got some old stuff I could give you. If we get in the week, we'll have plenty for you. I have some new stuff I could give you if you ever want to get into it. Maybe some old lectures. <laughs> you could just yeah. I've got a lecture actually online that you could just riff over. In, in, nice. fact, in fact, we'd like to get a live red to pray of Solon's teaching session. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> um, I think I think we can make that happen. Sure. And so, is it official now? Well, no, sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zolani yeah, um, and I made uh, the end of Sonic 06 very interesting. You did? Oh, really? Super interesting. Yeah. We read I... off a lot of fan fiction. What's it called? We, 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 read, we read fan fiction and we went through. We didn't go through the whole game. We went through like most of it. We went through like the second half of it. The better now, half, honestly. That, that, yeah, the better half. It, it, was, it, was probably, it was probably one of the one of the best projects I've done. That was really really cool. If people liked that too. People were into that. So, and so then that, you found that, yourself that a, liking the fan project. fiction, adding on to it with your own headcanon and so on. <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't <laughs> bad. That. <laughs> it wasn't, no. wasn't bad. But so long you talk about Sonic studies. Um, I, I I'm, actually, I'm actually more. <laughs> These baby, I mean, like, I'm, I'm more interested, like, because, because, I mean, like, I, I just finished the Warped Earth stream a little while ago. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if there's, um, like, because, because I heard there's some kind of announcement or something. I don't know if I missed it, perhaps. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. This is the announcement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. This, I just, this is it. This is I, it. <laughs> I, I just kind of changed my mind when, when Diabetes is like, yeah, I'm interested. I'm like, okay, so screw what I was doing. <laughs> Can okay. I <laughs> can I ask? Can I ask a question for someone um, a little unfamiliar with the subject, though? Is there Sonic fan fiction, like a lot of it, or? Oh my yes. god! I never. I don't know if I've ever heard of. Let our none. resident Sonic Absolutely fan fiction. Absolutely none. Let no us, one has ever <laughs> written Sonic fan fiction. Let our resident <laughs> expert Zoe Quinn educate you on Sonic fan fiction. It's getting so expert. ubiquitous you can find it on graffiti in bathrooms now. Sonic fan fiction all over the place. It's ridiculous. <laughs> have, have you guys ever played the Sonic the Hedgehog game? The uh, the one involving DeviantArt. I oh God. No. Huh? Okay, so what you do for this game is you go to DeviantArt and then you type in whatever your name is and then the hedgehog and then you cry. And that's the entire game. <laughs> oh God, I don't... Why so, don't it doesn't, do, so it doesn't, doesn't have a Wednesday, is what you're saying. Oh, that sounds... Yeah, and we're actually no, gonna be... No, we're actually, super indie. We're actually gonna be announcing it today at E3. Indie three, Lodi the Hedgehog. <laughs> no, that, that's got to be. No, oh, I would, be, oh, I would no. not be surprised if somebody actually already has drawn that. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, that's that's a thing. That's a thing. That's <laughs> All right, is there a guy who just the Hedgehog too? All right, I'll be right back. <laughs> hey, hey, everybody, welcome the to Indie Three podcast. The, and just, the wailing of people on the podcast means it's working. Just to, just to add to it, the caption is Kefka's secret form, so I got a little Final Fantasy in there too. Unfortunately, oh my god, <laughs> you just <laughs> uh, you just about filled a bingo card there. <laughs> there is no diabetes. The hedgehog get to work. People. Uh, <laughs> we have nine hundred viewers. Diabetes. I think that might happen. Well, you welcome, so let welcome. Your imaginations fly. Welcome <laughs> to ND three, everybody. <laughs> Hey, uh, I still have to introduce give... myself. Oh crap! Sorry. This is this no. is a uh, a little online cyber conference that I put together with Austin, Zolani, and Solon over the last couple days. We're focusing exclusively on showing off a bunch of indie titles that people wouldn't actually like show at E3 because like mm -hmm. you know, no visibility or like people will look at it and be like, I don't care about that. That's not that's that's not my oh, Call of oh, Duties or whatever Jesus. people say. But, right and, and yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog and, and Sonic the Hedgehog, which yeah, and Metal Gear and and lots of lots of it, love it, but yeah, <laughs> no, not really, but yeah, actually I do, but no, we're going, um, and then we also have a bunch of really interesting panels set up that will be going on this entire week, that are gonna be like all conducted online through Mumble. We've got a lot of really interesting topics already. There's there's a lot of topics on indie development and Let's Play and like you know getting those mixed together so why, why don't we just go ahead and get a head start on some ideas with that one 
I I have so many ideas on them, but I'm afraid of taking the wind out of the sails. Of... Now, um, <laughs> I think I think it's kind of interesting because back when we did uh, LP on something awful, we had this like six month rule because we didn't want to collide with or possibly have the let's play be like a substitute product for the game. But right. like, it seems to have had this sort of inverse kind of thing where it like sort of seems like it helps market it and stuff. And now like it seems like a lot of especially the indie developers like let's play because it helps kind of like word of mouth and bring their game out but i'm not a developer i'm not an expert i don't know i just talk over them you know? <laughs> but that's just what it seemed like to me in an know. indie kind of way right 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 yeah exactly all i'm saying slow beef quit your job do it full time i <laughs> <laughs> we at indie three have you i'm i'm trying but i'm so untalented is the thing that... <laughs> It's hard to make money when you don't have anything going for you. You know, it's um, it's hard to make money even when you have everything going for you. Who is right. Who is making that awful sound? What? I, there was like a lot what of. What do you think? What do you mean? Now's not I a good time to run the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> 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 Look, you can you can I'll do some you cleaning. Have, you have all the time in the world after this. All right, we're all, we're on a very strict schedule. We're, we're not though. We don't we don't care. That was actually someone vacuuming up all the Slow Beef the Hedgehog pictures <laughs> that was strewn around my room. <laughs> First so like, uh, Wait, For I, the I love of this... God, why did you hit print? <laughs> he just couldn't, so, he couldn't look away. Sorry? Uh, so I've kind of heard from some Let's Players that you can have like some difficulties uh, with like copyright claims and stuff. Is there anything like as a game developer you can do to be like, yeah, please go make money off of my games. Like I, I know some people have been doing that, but is that like something that the like game devs should adopt more often? Yes, um, there are like lists maintained and everything like that. But um, I know Devolver like has it very clearly on their page. Like do whatever you like with our game footage, and what have you. You know, it's best when it's clearly stated because when you get hit by something, you know, especially with indie where it's not like a big name that you might recognize immediately. You know, like, um, and I'll tell you what's happening, too, is there's now third parties who are kind of being, like, jerks about it and just, like, copyright editing other people's videos, even if they have nothing to do with the video, which is what's yeah. going on. I think, yeah. that, I think it was Mike Bithell that, it, and I could be totally wrong on this, but they had, like, posted their own trailer or something, and yeah. I guess it was, like, and they, they got taken down from, even though it was their game. Yeah, that's, that. um, it was a VVVVV, right? Was yeah, it, I, I don't remember which one that, it was. So it was either Terry or Mike, I think. I can't think of the developer right now, but yeah, that, I know that was the game. They posted their own trailer, and someone copyrighted the music, which is ridiculous because, you know, is there music, you know. And uh, it also, the game Thomas was alone. Um, the developer was tweeting um, the big, like, uh, companies that was doing this, and was saying, like, you have to stop copyright claiming people. I want, you know, it's my game. It's I obviously developed the music in it, you know, knock it off. Uh, it, it's kind of unscrupulous because I think a lot of Let's Players are sort of afraid to fight this sort of thing because it's, you know, for some of it, it's kind of this weird gray area where you're not quite sure who owns what and things like that. Um, so it's it's very helpful for indie developers to come right come out and say it as loud as they can. Like, yeah, if, you know, it, it, you know, use it as much as you like, monetize if you like, or don't mo or use it but don't monetize or, you know, whatever the rules are. So it's like out there so you can go there but you know what i mean but a lot of a lot of people who do let's play they're not really aware of what their rights as content creators are so they kind of just a lot of them I, I don't like this they like to sort of defer and say like oh if somebody hit me or whatever i guess i'll just let it go and it's like then you get like these jerks who don't have anything to do with anything but just make the money off it you know right oh, I, I always wonder claims. if that might get better because like i know youtube just they have like this new uh, game space, like communal area thing. And I know they're trying to get more involved with like understanding both indie game people and let's players and stuff like that. So maybe they'll figure it out, but I don't know. Right. Honestly, and I, don't I hold my mind. breath. Because uh, just... the biggest thing stopping people from making let's plays is the copyright. Mm -hmm. It's the number one thing keeping creation alive. People are <laughs> afraid. They're actively fearing. Right. Cause very it simple makes... thing. Yeah. yeah, no, it, yeah, no, absolutely. You're absolutely right. Because it, it makes it, it sounds like a big legal thing you should be scared of. Like, you know, you're going to be getting like a, a subpoena or something like that. But in reality, it's just some company that's like, oh, they won't fight us back. Screw it. We'll like, we'll take their ad revenue. And that's that, you know? 
right. it's like, frustrating it, um, when the only company that doesn't allow everyone else overwhelmingly is like now at this point 2014 is now like go please mm -hmm. no absolutely and you know what i run one of these companies because i hate let's play and want to destroy it but we that's having it. been said yeah no, that's, why we're, that's why we're having this talk so we can so we can expose <laughs> so the let's can, play so for can... the lie that it is right yeah, I mean, and obviously, you know, you don't want to, like, hear the things I'm saying and assume that's legal advice or something. But, like, it is true that if somebody, like, copyright IDs you, you, you get the counterclaim free. You know what I mean? As long as you're okay with, you know, the, um, giving these people, like, they, they, they get your personal information. So if you have a P.O. box, obviously, that's helpful if it's just some person. But if you Google who's doing it and actually make sure they're associated with either the game or whatever, because otherwise some people, like... They'll just be like, hey, I'm, uh, blank, you know, such and such music, and I'm hitting you for this song, like, Where Are the Roses? And you're like, I don't, that song's not even in this game sound. What are they talking about? And it's either a, con a you know, an accidental content ID mismatched to, as a fault on Google's part, or it's these other people that just register a ton of sound clips and hope they hit something. You know what I mean? They cast oh a wide net. Oh, my God. Net. Really? So there's, like, oh, there's like patent trolls for sound I, effects on Let's yeah, Play? That's there, ridiculous. There I've read oh, yeah. about that. Yeah, they're, they're, there are also content holders for stock sounds. What's yeah, that one group called, Slowly? For like indie music? Yeah, IMG or... music. I, I can't. Music, yeah. I can't. They're the people that the Thomas was alone uh, people got in the fight with, and they hit. They hit us on a, a couple things, which they had just nothing to do with, you know. And I like so we filed counters. I I go I go I went to I privated the videos too because, you know, we we really don't make like a ton of ad revenue, but just on the principle, it's like that's got nothing to do with you. You know what I mean? If it was the developer, you don't want to let them get away with it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just and it's of course, annoying. And of course, the thing being that uh, with uh, with recent acquisitions by companies owned by Google, et cetera, et cetera, this is only going to get worse for people who want to play video games for other people on the internet. You That's know? exactly right. Yeah. Which is why no, we're you're... which is why we're here and not somewhere else to be as vague about it as possible. <laughs> no, but you're you're absolutely right. And a lot, uh, like I was saying, like a lot of people are just kind of scared of it because they think like something bad could happen, but it really is just people who want cash, you know. And, that, and the thing is, too, like, I, I do encourage people, because there's nothing wrong with it, to say if you're counterclaiming someone in those two weeks it takes to sort it out, that person is still just making money off your video. You might as well private. And I know some LPRs don't like it because it's like, well, my audience wants to see episode 37 of whatever. What if they can't? And it's like, you know, it's, yeah, it sucks for those two weeks, but it's better that than, like, having somebody who's sort of able to make a revenue stream. If I'll just hit these people for two weeks, and for that two weeks, I just take whatever they got. You know what I mean? If your audience um, gets mad at you, they're wrong anyway. Yeah, exactly. Hey, uh, I just want to pull a question in here from the chat real quick. Uh, Philip Royer is asking if there is a place he can go to offer his game to content creators for the purpose of their own content creation. Do you oh, know you what Red Supre does content creation? <laughs> it's a poor <laughs> question, I think. Depends on how many drinks I've, I've had. I will I will say this we we've we have been contacted like on YouTube PM or whatever uh, to say like hey would you want to promote games and we're happy to do that except you know it kind of doesn't fit with what we do on our channel um, so we just take the Steam keys and play the game no I'm kidding um, it uh, a lot of us players are very happy to do that especially because as things get more and more quote competitive people do want to have like that sort of first you know first to market kind of thing so if you're a game dev and you uh, somebody to LP your game. Absolutely, like, get in contact at the LP or any way you can, you know? You never know. Like, even, I mean, even the, the bigger name people, you know, like, um, All Sham, No Wow, Northern Lion, whatever, you know, like, they're totally, like, open, normal people. They're not, like, they don't have, like, corporations behind them or anything. So, you yes. know, just hit up. Yeah, yeah exactly. So, like, it's actually kind of cool. It's, like, Let's Play is sort of becoming this, like, rise of what, I don't know, anytime I'm, like, I'm really curious about what this game is, like, I don't really read reviews anymore because and sorry to anybody who's listening that is a games journalist, including or the Kotaku writer who's call. literally Yeah, or in the call, or the fact that I'm literally sitting next to someone who writes for Kotaku. Game reviews are fucking useless. Like nine times out of ten, they don't tell me anything I'm very interested about and it's just some random's opinion. Well not necessarily some random person, but like reviews themselves usually don't really help that much like cr like critique and critical analysis are good but if it's just like i want to know if i want to buy this game or not i go watch a let's play and see what's actually going on and of course the thing about it being that let's plays are also going to be the new frontier for for critic for criticizing video games as well there's more and more people who are you know doing the video game videos commentary thing but they're just they're also using it to do critical angles like super bunny hop and campster uh, Aaron signal so i mean that's uh 
that's where this is going you know it's I'm just no absolutely and the uh you know the thing is too like it, a lot of like triple a um reviewers especially you know you can see things where like they don't want to piss off potential audience members so if they have a controversial opinion they won't really leverage it you know what i mean like so other m you know is kind of a famously bad story but they kind of dance around it because they don't want to it's mad and not come back to the website you know what i mean yeah and you do see it like in some of the for fringe things but the nice thing about let's play is you have it's it's not exactly meant to be a review per se it certainly can be used that way and it's good for that a- aspect don't get me wrong but it's sort of like uh unbiased and it's just someone's like first impression of it so you get kind of like a um i guess raw sort of vicarious feeling of what it's like to play the game yourself you know yeah definitely it, and that's like super useful it can get dicey with those kinds of people who do day one less plays of AAA games who are doing it more mm. for the traction and views than actually wanting to give it any kind of critical look. They just want people to watch them it's, say inane it, stuff over it. That's, that can be a that problem. Gets, that gets very tricky, yeah. You know? And it, it, it's funny because uh, we, we actually talked with Jim Sterling about this on a podcast, and you know he mentioned name it's dropping. like... Yeah, I, I am name dropping, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I might as... No, um, but... You know, he mentioned too, like some like let's players are kind of going where games journalists were, where they're sort of fighting each other now to be like the sort of first to market and get like the beta copy, the review copy. You know, um, yeah, and that's like one thing. Like you know, I, say, like, I hope a lot of let's players try to exercise that kind of restraint because you have like Dark Souls two, for example. Someone broke embargo and posted an entire playthrough on the game a week early, I which is kind of crummy. Yeah, because yeah, it's crummy though, because it's like. Nobody can even play the game then. Even with a day one LP, you could at least say, all right, I could theoretically go to the store if I want to stay on spoiled or watch it with, you know what I mean? But yeah, like a week like, early, it's just... Even when it comes to like uh, day one Let's Plays, like it's like day one, here's episode one, and then like yeah, and then yeah. like a week later, you do episode two or whatever. And like, I think I think that is fine. But like, yeah, yeah I've seen I've seen some really absurd uh, people like going off on that kind of stuff. Like on, a ridic- oh, no. on like a ridiculous, like I remember... Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and reference both of you anyways. Like there was that video you did on uh, Dark Souls Two in Retsu Prey with that mm-hmm. fucking with that one guy with that mm-hmm. fucking with that one guy who like yeah. like his description was just like let's play Dark Souls Two, let's play Dark Souls Two to walk through, let's play Dark Souls Two walk through <laughs> PS4. And at that at that point, I'm just like you're you need to you need to sit hashtag down. Benghazi. <laughs> 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 yeah. and then, like at that point at that point you just need to like sit the hell down and like relax for just a moment like it's not that big a deal i promise you <laughs> the, and, uh, the other thing is like the, the other thing for me being that like there's probably a crowd of people who are literally just like who have the money to buy triple a games so that they can have the first day one lp of it but the thing about that is like how many of those games are you actually buying for your own enjoyment like if i had had the money and the equipment i might have done a day one stream of dragon guard 3 just based on my love of the developer and my excitement for the game but sure. like you know it's just it's, uh, there is definitely a crowd of people who are just like we want to have day one on everything no, you know? absolutely, yeah, absolutely, because, you know, they want to come up in the search results, you know, when people, like, see the day one, I want to see footage from it, oh, here is such and such is, you know, um, uh, Halo Super Advanced Warfare thing, you know, four. It's <laughs> my favorite indie game, actually. No, yeah, mine too. Um, <laughs> uh, what else? <laughs> I was gonna I was gonna make a follow up point to that too, but I completely lost it. But you know, it's it's it, it is, and it's it's nice though to see like what I like too. My favorite thing is like let's play of games you've never heard of before. You know, like when you watch that, like people who do like the indie games or like the ROM hacks and things like that, and it sort of exposes you to things that like games news sites kind of wouldn't. You know, like more obscure yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's a whole yeah. new promotional arm that your AAA games don't even need. Because and, even though even though games journalism is largely a uh, even though games journalism is largely an enthusiast press, there's still a lack of enthusiasm for tons of even the AAA games that are coming out. I mean, I mentioned Dragon Guard Three; that game but got barely any press. You know, I pitched a review, mm-hmm. press, but they're not I, even I enthusiastic. And they said they weren't going to cover it. So, sorry, what? Job to be enthusiastic and. I think I need you to repeat that one more time. You were, you were kind of oh. like cutting out a bit. Yeah, yeah you got a whole bunch. Sorry. Carry on. Excuse me. You know, um, there's funny thing, too. There's a reverse effect, because sometimes people question, well, what about Let's Plays that, like, make fun of or give really harsh reviews of the game? And I, I found, personally, like, I did a, a Let's Play of a game called Sprung, which was this terrible... Oh 
mm-hmm. launch PS launch title for um it was like a, a western dating sim thing but you just pick conversation tree it was just awful and um like 20 or 30 people posted in the thread oh i found this game and i ended up buying it i'm like no that's <laughs> wait i'm saying don't this is awful you know? this yeah, game it's like, it's so like mystery much. science theater awful right you see like it's like hi camp. i never and was that was that the screenshot out let's play because i think i yeah. actually i was one of those people <laughs> i read that and i'm like oh my god i need this in my life yeah, um, that was, and then that's that just his... mason people all over the phone, and it was great. <laughs> it was all yeah. That was uh yeah. That was a screenshot. Let's play, but um, <laughs> yeah. No, it's it's funny because it does. It has that like reverse effect on things, you know. But like, I mean, let's play is the reason I own a copy of God Hand, you know, because I other I <laughs> I never have heard about it except for wasn't that that game that IGN said was awful, you know, that kind of thing. You yeah, know? so be, you yeah. and you and I definitely have some words to say about God Hand. And treasure, but, all all the stuff that you've been like showing off on your channel lately. I'm just like you, you're like picking literally all of my favorite games, and it's pissing me <laughs> off. I never, I've never played some of them though. I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, I'm new to Alien Soldier, for example. It's now like one of my favorite games ever. But yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I, I take a lot of influence from Alien Soldier and games like that when I design my games. I'm actually, I'm actually gonna be doing a panel about that. So you know, tune in. I'm just tune in because. I love me some alien soldier. Yeah, that panel we're gonna be uh we're also gonna be hanging out with Austin who's gonna be talking about Yoko Taro. Yo, and, mm-hmm. um, the director of Dragon Guard Three. And then Chip Cheesem's gonna be talking about Platinum Games. I don't know who that is. I don't. I don't yeah, I never know. heard no, of I'm him. I'm just kidding. See, I, just, I just kind of looked it up and I was like, hmm, I need uh, let's one mm, Chip Cheesem. Okay, whatever. <laughs> yeah. It's really great how like indies and uh and let's players are starting to hang out more and more because like. I like I, I saw a couple let's players around GDC, which which I don't think I would have seen a couple <laughs> years ago, and it, but there's still like a weird disconnect. Like I snuck uh, Voidburger into Indicate East earlier, and it, yeah, and it was like so great to have her there. And she's like, oh, and it like was just didn't know that things like this happen. But it's like <laughs> every time I talk to let's players, like they're pretty much on the same level because I think we're all like super small teams that do our own sort of weird stuff and put it out there for free or cheap and i don't know that's and we all we all really obviously love games or hate and want to destroy games because we love them and it's blah whatever yeah, complicated exactly. well, tell, feelings. <laughs> well tell me tell me if you think it's this too it's like i think like maybe maybe half a generation ago you know like if you talk about creating video games that was something with a huge barrier to entry and then also if you talk about something like making a TV show, you know, that's also something that back then had a huge barrier of entry. And nowadays, like, games have kind of become kind of, like, easier to develop with the internet and collaboration, and now people can make tools and things like that. And then you have, obviously, YouTube. Because I think back then we all kind of wanted shows with vid- about video games, and you had, like, Captain N, and that was kind of it, you know, or whatever. So maybe that's kind of why, is, like, you have people now who are sort of making the things that they want to make, because nowadays it's a little easier to make them. I I'd also yeah, it's way that... easier to distribute it. I, I I'd also really like to point out that LPs have gotten so much easier to make, yeah. that streaming games and creating LPs has gotten so much easier to make. I tried to do it around 2009 and 10 with a group of friends. Absolute disaster. But mm-hmm. now with stuff like OBS and, you know, just because you can just record, you can just live stream it and then archive that and then upload to YouTube. It's like a two-step <laughs> process. Yeah, oh, yeah. I've, been, I've been doing that with my streams, too. It's, it's just, it's great because you just, you don't have to, you don't have to do, like, any legwork except maybe type in a description and do, like, cut parts out where there's like nothing happening it's really awesome i think mm-hmm. i think uh because of stuff like this there's going to be like a huge insurgence of uh of more like independent kind of stuff and more let's play and more indie like coming together case case in point right here on channel indie 3 <laughs> oh, yeah. exactly Which, yeah. it's, it's great because like especially because games involve so many different disciplines like you know you got the programming the art the design writing if you have it and like all these other things it makes it makes so much sense to talk to other people that um are like independent creators who do uh who just make the stuff that they care about like another really similar uh, circle to talk to are webcomic uh people like i i want to sort of drag them kicking and screaming into making games if they want to as well because it's like the mentality is the same yeah definitely like there's there's just there's just like so much like untapped potential in like all these different kinds of collaborations that can happen now because of like the the advancement of technology plus plus at this point like most if not everybody is kind of tired of triple a shit 
oh, we're kind of here. We all want to like do something better than it, and that's basically like where all these all these different things are coming from. Like all these new publications for like indie writing, all this all all this experimental stuff. It's it's really awesome to witness. Or, or at least see something different. Yeah. Yeah. There's always going to be people of any any medium and any like industry that see the the big productions that have like a lot of money and a lot of people involved and just be like, you know what, that's not for me. And cause, like on the other side, there's um, I have plenty of friends who work in AAA that are just like, yeah, I just want to do this one little thing. I don't want to have to like manage my own crap. I don't. I want to be able to move from project to project. And for them, AAA is a really good fit. But I think there's a lot of people, and, and that's there's probably an analog to that in almost anything. But so there's always going to be people that are like, you know what, I'd rather not. I'd rather go my own way and you know do my own thing and get get weird. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's where the we have the tools for that. That's where the most interesting well, stuff comes from at this point. Even in even in game reviewing, you have that where uh, a large site will here's here's uh, first person shooter number seven this year, mm-hmm. uh, writing for a small site. You get well. Here's a here's here's a game about driving down a highway and picking up a hitchhiker. Yep. There's mm-hmm. there's such a contrast. Shout out to glitch hikers. Shout out to glitch hikers. We'll be reviewing. We'll be interviewing C Melusine later on this week. <laughs> But there, there are so many different things. Uh, Simon Carlson is working on a Kickstarter for a game about losing a child made entirely out of paper. Wow, child's made that, out of paper. Or the game. The that, the 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 game both. is presented. Everything is done in papercraft. He's doing oh, all so the, the yeah. he's doing all the papercraft, and he's doing the the music himself. He's doing everything himself. It looks I, absolutely breathtaking, and I can't wait to also talk to Simon about it. What that needs is a scare cam let's play, I think. Oh, no, I'm joking. It doesn't sound like it has enough guns and cars either. I'm, I'm going to pass. There, I, I will say he does have, well. There are cars in it. He does have driving in it. Well, point so- refuted. <laughs> I will say this, is that, um, I mean, there, I, there, have been, there have been a few genres or whatever. I mean, specifically RPGs, especially, where, where I just kind of go... I watch E3 every year or something like that, and I just go, when are we going to get more of these? You know, it's just like, when am I going to see, when, you know, when's the genre going to come back, or when are the companies that are known for making these going to start putting out more of them? I did a, a trailer showcase for a small fraction of the games that are going to be showcased here at Indie 3 and I saw at least three RPGs that I wanted to pay money for and play right now, you know? So that's the thing is that if you're if you're looking for a specific type of experience, I can almost guarantee you that if you go looking around in independently published games, even just on Steam or even just on itch.io or something, you're gonna find what you're looking for, and you probably are gonna find something else that you didn't know you were looking for either. Yeah, and and, and like as an indie that is able to like you don't have to pay like 500 people's mortgages, and you don't have all the pressures of, that a bigger studio has. You can be like, oh hey. You, like I'm doing that literally right now. Like my main project, like I'm working on Framed, but my project that I'm like head head of, like my baby right now, is an FMV game, and nobody's gonna make those. <laughs> like that, like that genre died. I but just, I just like... want to say that when you said when you said that you were thinking about making an FMV game, at that point I was just kind of like, she's gonna make an FMV game. Well, what happened? So what happened was uh, I went. I was in Vegas with two other writers because we were doing like some uh, for the re- uh, for Gonzo the record, for retreat. The record, I'm really upset that you were in Vegas the one time that I haven't been there. After hey, I was there upset. I was in Vegas years. too. <laughs> I was totally upset to be in Vegas too, and I understand why you ran screaming. Oh my god, that place is like a shitty level designer went to town. The, oh, yeah. That place. Is, <laughs> That place is a sad club song about how this is the best night of your life played to an empty Denny's at two in the morning. <laughs> Fuck Vegas. That shit is worst dangerous. rendered city. Worst. We like seriously. We woke up to the sounds of a woman weeping at the Circus Circus one yeah. of the days we were there. That's, that's like, Denny's, all right? Yeah. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, it, and Vegas is so much like Denny's because like you only end up there if something's gone terribly wrong. Yeah. In both cases. Um, but yeah, like, so so it was a bunch so of writers. So what happened and, if you ended up Waffle House? At Waffle House, I don't know. Um, I I know there's like, are there Waffle Houses in that part of the country? I know there's like, I hop Waffle House distribution, and I'm not sure where that where one is and the other isn't. There's a Waffle House in Vegas. Cut I hops and Waffle Houses in there, the south. <laughs> there's not a Waffle House in Seattle because we are far too dignified for that. 
<laughs> well, I mean, I, IHOP is seriously not any better. It's not, yeah. But, well, yeah. I hope they at least get you a coffee on the table, which I appreciate, but, yeah, I mean, I'm kidding. Is Waffle <laughs> House or IHOP more indie? That's a really good I question. Hop. You think IHOP? No, it isn't. Don't encourage him. That's awful. That's, yeah. I'm sorry. No, it's great. <laughs> it's both. <laughs> IHOP, it's international. <laughs> IHOP because it's called IHOP. Just right. to say that. The, the I stands for, for indie. indie. Yeah! Yeah! I, wasn't, yeah! I wasn't even going to go for that joke. Everyone clap along. Look, look, my jokes are all 100% like zero dollars and zero cents cheap, and I wasn't even going to go for that, so <laughs> I'm just going to let y'all simmer in that shame. To, to be uh, fair- I, I have no shame, sorry, it's not going to work. To be to be fair, my jokes are actually like the solo that I owe you money, but like I tell them real- <laughs> I tell them really loud, so, you know, it, it, it kind of hopefully makes up for it. I know it doesn't. So we just learned about the Louder too, is right? funnier. <laughs> Indeed. What, el um, what, el what else do we have coming up or, uh, to look forward to in this in this wonderful, like, uh, in this whole expo? Well, this let's hear some expo. plugs. Yeah. yeah. We were actually, a... we were kind of banking on this whole thing kind of burning down after this. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're actually gonna well, I apologize for the red this suit our, bump you're this, about to receive. So, so this, <laughs> this is, is like our video, blaze of glory. So this is like video game Burning Man. Leave no trace. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> In that case, we have to turn the stream off now. I can't be associated with this. I'm sorry I started this. But yeah, um, uh, we have we have a ton of games that are going to be shown off. Like we so far, we've only shown off. Like, DJ. Did he, my, did he want, come back. Did he wander off? Sorry, sorry, sorry. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to multitask. He's trying to trail did you start, get out. Did you start you slowly going? walking away from the mic? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, we got a lot of things. Oh my god, it's falling apart. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, he sure did, we have. Just, both at the door. He just uh, got into the world's slowest escape vehicle as soon as we started talking about that and just kind of driving away. He hopped on the escape vehicle. The horror movie where the ignition won't start. You're like, yeah, plenty of things. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, I'm so I'm so glad this is happening right now. But yeah, we, we seriously we have like over 160 games that have been submitted to us so far. A bunch of them were shown off at Warp Tour at uh, the channel Indie Four, which is offline right now. And we showed off some trailers today. Did uh, any, anybody anybody around here catch some of those trailers? I know Solon was getting hyped while I was doing work back here. Yeah, I was yeah, getting I really high while you were doing work. I, I said hyped. That's my job, okay? Oh. <laughs> please, please don't ban us, Hitbox. But, but yeah, beat <laughs> It's it. just a beat Seattle us. thing, I, heard, I swear. Uh, I heard you were watching the stream. Did, it, did any titles catch your interest? I was. I was saying before, I think it was one of the first times we were rudely cut out. It was um one of the first games you guys showed where it was kind of an isometric view with one of the Magicka-looking wizards. I can't remember the title of it, though. Lumo. Final Fantasy Tactics. Final Fantasy Tactics. <laughs> 7 no, versus Lu 13 the second. Great. Thank you. I'm yeah, excited was about Lumo. Yeah. Was that, was that Lumo? I, I, missed, I actually missed that one. That was, that was definitely Lumo. Okay. All right. What was, what was that one about? No clue, but it looks cool. It's 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 about a baby that looks like a wizard or a wizard that looks like a baby. I'm not really sure. <laughs> baby Both babies are cool first in my game. book. There you go. Wizard babies. Um, I really I'm like super interested in Wake the Dreamer because as soon as the art popped up, I was getting some really strong out of this world vibes, yeah. and that game was amazing. And yeah. like looking through the screenshots and some of the monster design, like I I would love another out of this world because that that game was absolutely brilliant. People definitely <laughs> people definitely raved for that one. Like I was checking out the tag and like when when that reveal was going on, like eight people tweeted about it. It's so weird. Everybody likes that game. It's uh, you know, I or like everyone I've, I, who's played it is always like remembers it fondly. That and I liked Flashback too. Yeah, yeah Flashback was, was awesome. Are they the same company or I forget? But I, um, I yep, so. they are. Oh, it is. Yeah. Was it the same? Yeah, it was like that same creator. It yeah, was, I'm um, pretty sure. That like rotoscoped, like semi-realistic-ish kind of side scroller type of deal. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was really, really. I like that game a lot. It, it was so good at like. I played the game when I was pretty young because it was one of the few games like I only really had a the only console I had when I was younger was a 3D on my dad got a garage sale for 25 bucks. Oh, I'm um, so sorry. No, I'm not because it was amazing. <laughs> that and, sounds amazing. I mean, no, it was fantastic. Like the first game I ever played on a console was fucking Night Trap. Oh, sorry. Are we not? Are we still not supposed to swear? 
Uh, we're, supposed to, we're supposed to keep it to a minimum, but like, okay. we, everyone's been good so far. Gosh darn. This, this podcast brought to you by Ubisoft. The code of conduct <laughs> is basically like an achievement list that you can check off. <laughs> right. But yeah, like, uh, Out of This World is just like so ridiculously captivating. And like, I'd never seen a game that would just let you die in like the first 20 seconds and just like light, <laughs> just like light a fire under you immediately and be like, hey, deal with this. Like, hey, you're act- hey, you, you know how this looks cool and all, but also you're actually playing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, and I, I rem- and you're totally right because uh, after the intro, uh, where the guy gets like zapped into this other planet, and the- and like you start sinking in the water, I died immediately because I thought it was still a movie. Like, <laughs> like it was still like part of the clip. And I'm like, oh, oh crap! I can do things. Oh no, I'm dead. Yeah, that's that's a really awesome game. I actually, um, I watch a long play of it pretty frequently whenever I'm like bored and stuff because 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 I'm the kind of person who when I'm bored I'll just put on like 24 different long plays that I just randomly download and just like all right time to watch this now because I don't watch TV <laughs> my, my whole life is video games is the thing it's it's a really tragic and sad life and it's, yeah I'm yeah. so sorry dude. T- TJ is actually a video game right now you, you he's a very no elaborate ARG idea. exactly it's amazing I, I was actually I was actually made by Zoe Quinn for the record you're welcome be real, TJ has great graphics. Wait, wait, if, I'm, if I made you, that means you're not a game. Crap! <laughs> Damn it. I guess, I, guess, I guess I can't be here then. Sorry. Oh. But, but not games are the best games. <laughs> At this point, like really Darks, Like Dark Souls. Uh, yeah, uh, 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 controversy! I'm, I'm just doing it because I hate that fandom. Yeah. It's not a game! Eat it! Also, dragons are the same thing as drinks! Oh, no! Oh, shit. Uh, the chat's about sorry. to blow up in, like, 20 seconds, I swear to God. <laughs> Honestly, Probably. I'm just happy to not be the only person in the world that can't stand the Dark Souls fandom or hearing about oh, things. Hey, um, guys. Like, don't don't guys. get me started. No, it's please, more please like... It's happening. It's happening. It's more like Dark Souls. <laughs> oh, wow. Whoa, my oh, God. God. Zing. I oh, did it. Burn. Boom. <laughs> I have a I have a friend who's a huge Dark Souls fan, and even he admits that the Dark Souls fandom is completely insufferable. And he admits oh. he's also insufferable. <laughs> you know what? It, it would be like if you made a joke like burned like with the great you know pyromancy flame. Someone else like, that's a stupid thing to equip. What's wrong with you? You know, and it's like just turn it off for a minute. Like, hey, do, do you know how you can tell someone's a Dark Souls fan? How's that? Don't don't worry, they'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Oh I read an I, re- I read an article that basically said don't play Dark Souls because if you play Dark Souls you'll become a Dark Souls fan. Like that was the entire point that of the article. Not true. Can I can I reveal my secret video for tomorrow? Oh no, I can't stand Dark Souls for the record. Go ahead. I I did a I inadvertently started doing a let's play of Dark Souls. Like I really intended to do one or two video and it kind of took off. Um, and the fan base was insufferable. So I finished. But the last video I made was everyone was mad at me for missing the lore. So I went. So as an olive branch, I like went back to the New Game Plus, the white spider lady that everybody likes, and I started listening to her cutscene, and I pull out a big hammer and beat her to death. <laughs> just, oh and then, and then I'm just laughing the whole time, and then I take her fire eater soul and I just use it for humanity instead of like the thing you're supposed to. And then, it, oh and then at the end, I said, "By the way, dragons are the same effing thing as drinks." Good night and drop the light. Was, I'm, amazing. I'm, I'm dying amazing. To, I'm dying for it to go up. Amazing. Out. <laughs> but, that's anyway. so you have good. to collect. You looked... have to collect and post the best comments that you get on that video. <laughs> for the love somebody, of God, I somebody gave it. me cr- somebody gave me crap. I downvoted a praise the sun comment because there were like two in a row, and someone's like, "What if you're playing the game in character?" I I just can't. That was the comment. <laughs> what? what really? Really? Yes, really, really. I I could go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, no worries at all. <laughs> Spray some SPF in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm just waiting after talking about not liking the Dark Souls fandom to go back to my Twitter feed and people be like, "Oh, Zoe Quinn is probably responsible for chemtrails because she said this." <laughs> Zoe Quinn is single-handedly destroying the ozone layer. You're yeah, not, no, like, right? like any, t- well, <laughs> you Sorry. know, so sometimes you get drunk and you wake up and you accidentally chemtrails and then it's just it's terrible. I've, I've, been, <laughs> I've been there, trust me. I've, I've been to New York. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you have like crazy, awful fans that like send, uh, not yes. fans, uh, 
Okay, so what is the weirdest, what is the weirdest <laughs> thing an internet person has said or done to you? Oh, God. Um, let's, I, let's have that be the topic. Someone, uh, I'm trying to think. Beatus, do you have to, any good ones? I, I <laughs> welcome to Indie Tree After Dark, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, Dear well, Indie we Penthouse. Have, we have erotic fan fiction. Uh, it's oh, called hey. The Last... It's called The Last Rep You Pray. Um, yeah, I actually retweeted one of those just today. Let's let's not go. Why? Let's not go too no. far into the details. Yeah, the, it was a it was a Twitter it was a tweet from fanfiction.txt. Yeah, right. And yeah. it said, um, I saw a bunch of those actually. I like Rep You Pray and all, but I really don't need to watch them having sex. Yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I got, but you do I've, need to. Watch. I've got wait, 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 two wait, wait. of watch those, them? like with another with other developers. It was. Uh, I got one with Max Temkin after we did the bombcast because I guess <laughs> we like made some joke about bees and then uh, people were like, oh, "Are they flirting?" It's like, "What?" <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Um, and the other one was uh, with Christine Love like two years ago, and it, it like there was a fan art and it was just like the weirdest thing in the universe. I'm, I'm <laughs> like, I'm what, what do you even? You know. You know what was a weird one? We when we were at PAX, some um this I guess maybe it was someone's mother, but this like woman in her what would you say she was, maybe fifties? Like comes up to us Yeah, middle aged. No, yeah, middle aged, didn't say a word, puts up a camera, takes our picture, nods and leaves. What? I will never <laughs> didn't say a word to us. No, like just like shh, gone. Like what the <laughs> That hey, is so I'm weird. Telling you, those uh those those uh those little areas get very very strange. <laughs> yeah. At times. Yes, they do. There was, there was, some, there was. That, uh, it's kind of weird because you always, see, you always hear like weird stuff like that happening at like PAX and E3, but you never hear about that mm -hmm. kind of thing happening at like IndieCade, even though IndieCade is no. filled with like the weirdest people in the industry. But I think it's like cool, weird, like that kind of yeah. like you know punk, punk nerd type of deal that you know. Weird like, the kind of nerd, like ways. the people in this in this call. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, like, I'm, no, I'm you know, like, my other best right now. The people you want on your IT team, you know, that you talk like, "How's your weekend?" and it's some crazy story, you know, yeah. or something. Not, not the yeah. kind of people where it's like, "Hey, how you doing?" You're just kind of like, eh, eh, "Go away." <laughs> the the kind of person I wish I were. No, um, <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can uh, never be that person, slow beef. No, 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 no. I've been writing um, fanfic this whole time, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. No, the weirdest fan thing that ever happened to me is someone apparently made Slow Beef the Hedgehog on Deviant Dark. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, we that would be the it. number one. <laughs> oh my god. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. Uh, any other weird fandom things anybody got? Any other any other weird games that people were interested in for ND3? Because I forgot this was happening. <laughs> ND3, what's that? Uh, ND3? <laughs> ND Do you mean Retsu Talk? <laughs> Oh my god, is this is this on? Like is this is this streaming? Yeah. Wait, this is live? Yeah. Yeah. That Who are you people? How did that I That wasn't here? part of the deal. All right. Um so so Betis, what el what else did you see that you were interested in? Oh, uh, let's see. There was a game about Peter. Hey, I lost track of the key. What are you laughing at me <laughs> you, for? Yeah, you weren't paying attention. <laughs> oh boy, I got oh, question. I got to think of something. I gotta make something up. No, there was the game about what was it? Pizza delivery. It's a big pizza pizzerian thing. P yeah, pizzerian. That looked neat. Uh, the the like side scrolling shoot 'em up. That's about yeah. pizza delivery. Yeah. Yeah. Pizzerian. Me and Beef both like shmups. I love shmups. Oh, we know. Pizza. <laughs> pizza and shmups. What can, you can't go wrong? Yeah, yeah you can. can. Unless you're diabetic. <laughs> <laughs> Always back to that. <laughs> you got you got to remind us, huh? First you put it in your mm. name, and now you bring it up on Red's Talk. Look, I have a device that beeps at me periodically and reminds me of myself. I live in hell. I'm in hell. <laughs> type, type A, and I'm type taking you one, we know. <laughs> oh, man, we should, we should not be laughing at that at all. No, you can. Fuck. <laughs> Screw it. Who cares? <laughs> Yeah, you know, come on. I can. I'm gonna pull that too soon, card guys. Okay. <laughs> Way too soon. You just you bring it up all the time. Your pancreas doesn't make insulin or laughs. Okay. <laughs> oh that is an old joke. You were recycling that from like I four years ago. I am recycling that like the sugar you can't have in soda. <laughs> oh my God. You are that's one fruit. You are one fruit by the foot in the grave. Okay. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> I. 
<laughs> no, but seriously, guys, diabetes diabetes is a real disease. You shouldn't joke. About and it. I slowly take the fruit by the foot out of my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> my god he's right like really he's... slowly it just keeps going and going and going it's like a magician yeah. a diabetic magician <laughs> who will not be making a game next year but uh... in short those are the games I'm looking forward to <laughs> that and Captain Novelin. Um hey, so no. indie I love that game <laughs> yeah I love I love that uh that uh was it was like that weird game about like, like is it like asking like health questions or something like that? It was like bonus levels or something ridiculous. What did did beat us? Did oh, in in in, uh, in Captain Novelin. Yeah. Sorry, what were you saying? I was I was talk I was asking about Captain Novelin. I know everything about Captain Novelin. I, I know you know everything about Captain Novelin. I, in I fact, I made it. forget. <laughs> You, I think you are the only person who played it, like, once, though. Is no, I used to go out. to diabetic I, conventions as a child, and they had that game there. They had, like, whole, really? little, like, arcades of Captain Novelin, like, six different booths all playing Captain Novelin you could play. Nothing else to do at that convention. I would just play it ad nauseum, and I won a teddy bear for doing so well at it. Was it, was it called Insukan? Yes. <laughs> okay. In the end, that's, all, that's really all that matters. <laughs> Pancreacon, they called it, yeah. Aw. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like super definitely looking forward to getting more of this uh more of this stuff going on with LP and indie for sure. Like I no, definitely. Like, it's it's really like it's just like an uncracked gem, I think. Like it's it's like yeah. it's like waiting for this kind of thing to happen essentially. I I mean like out of everything that went down with Game Jam that I am totally not violating contract a little bit by talking about the best thing it uh that came out of it was like talking and meeting let's players and like the concept of like trying to bring them involved with like game jams and stuff like that and it's been like a really fun part of rebel jam has been like talking with uh let's players and being and trying to figure out you know how to basically get them to be the intermediate between the people jamming and the audience that people have never seen anything about how to make a game and don't know what the hell a game jam is yeah like i have like you were like originally talking about the idea for Rebel Jam before all the Game Jam stuff happened. Like I was like, this is like really a good idea. Like yeah, until just, like, it was taking, really like, the not. The world. And, and then, I know, right? I, I, I still I still stand by that it was a good idea, but the uh, everything else that that followed was not a good idea. Yeah, it's uh, apparently it was a very very different concept in its in like conception but like it's been it got perverted pretty hardcore and the uh, last person who was like really cool to us on set like the, the guy who was like directing it and then was our liaison and was really optimistic and idealistic about it just got laid off uh finally because like they waited a, li a little while for the bad pr to calm down and then laid off everybody off so yeah, of he just got laid off like like three days ago i feel so sorry for him damn i remember that actually they were um Around the same time that I had uh, like started tweeting about Indie Three was when like Thirty Eight had those that like huge like layoffs that like and like everybody was talking about it this time. Like uh, did did we go? Are we still here? Yeah, we're still oh. here. Okay, we are yeah. still here. I think so. No, but you can never leave. <laughs> it's all's always fault. But yeah, I we've remember, we've uh, always been here, TJ. I, I know, I know you have. But yeah, I remember when um. That that whole that whole thing was like really interesting because I saw like a lot of unity in the game scene that like before then I had never actually seen that would stay consistent, you know? Like as as, as the indie community we kind of have this thing where it's like, Yeah, we're totally gonna do this thing and then nobody follows up on it and then everybody forgets about it. And then and Oh, and then, that's that's just artsy people though. Like that yeah, that's, that's always that's the case in, in general. everything. But like especially with like the indie scene and stuff, it's like like, because, like, everyone's always, like, getting mad about all the kind of stuff that happens, and yet, like, a couple days later, we forget it. Then it happens again, and then people start getting mad. I'm like, at what point are we going to, like, do something about this, you know? Which is, like, right. again, that's basically how this whole Indie 3 thing even happened in the first place. It's like, we need to do something instead of just, like, yeah, sitting I mean, here and whining about E3 again for the millionth goddamn time. That's, like, the, that's the way to do it. It's, like, as soon as you're, like, man, I wish this thing was different, or I wish this thing existed, or, or in, like, a different form, um, and instead of wondering, hey, when is it going to do a thing, you just have to do it. You know, you just have to be, like, 
instead of just having it be a what if ideal thing that you wish would the universe would bequeath unto you uh nobody's gonna do it if, if not you you know exactly like sometimes you really just need like that one person to just give that kick in the rear that you that everyone needs every once in a while just like get stuff kicked off yeah, because I mean, if you if you want the thing to exist, it's almost certain that you're not the only person. Yeah, exactly. very well said. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, this whole this whole experiment has basically proved that because we've had like like we picked up like 1,200 followers in like four days after this was just like a tweet that I had made at my girlfriend's house, and it's like and like now it's this thing where we're like we have all these panels where we're doing threats to talk and we have all these games that got submitted like. 160 games came in, and I still have, like, 60 unread emails last I checked, which is, like, two hours ago, so I'm sure we've been getting, like, even more submissions since then. It's been, like, going ridiculous. Yeah, totally. I mean, Lost there's... Levels was like that, too, right? Like, Lost Levels just kind of happened, in, like, in a park outside DDC with, yeah. like, tarps. <laughs> yeah, Lost Levels is awesome. I would, I would love to do, like, some sort of, like, collaboration with Lost Levels when, uh, when, that, when that time starts to roll around. If there if there is one takeaway I think Retsu Talk sixty two should have, it's that all your wildest dreams will come true as so long as you listen to us talk, all of us collectively. I, I, exactly. I, I Retsu Talk like, is the trampoline you'll use you use to bounce into AAA. Exactly. <laughs> oh no. You're no longer gonna be in D three after this. You're we just have, you're gonna you're on tomorrow actually. You're on the schedule for E three. The main thing. We found Sorry. the bridge. We found the bridge and we're crossing it. <laughs> but yeah, um, I guess I guess we can probably get ready to start closing up soon. It's almost eight o'clock. No, we're gonna go all night. Oh, oh, That's yeah. it. Well, we're gonna night. marathon this. I got no. I I have work tomorrow, so I. Unfortunate. I I do too, actually. In fact, I have work mm. at the moment that we stop doing this, but we're not. But yeah, fucking yeah. Thank you all so much for like being around and like volunteering and like agreeing to do this and like arrange this with us. It's really. It's really ridiculous how much stuff we've put together in such a short period of time. Well, thank you for having us. You know, yeah, I, yeah. thanks for starting the. You you started the fire. We Definitely. Didn't start the fire. Okay. Yeah, thank you, a... TJ. <laughs> you need to yeah. get some credit here. And Absolutely. All, all I'm saying, if you want, if you want to repay the favor, all you have to do is buy my game, Joy Lancer. It's really good. Joy Lancer. Joy Lancer. I am buy Joy Lancer. I am going to shout it from Lancer. the rooftops. Joy Lancer. Buy it. A6Productions.itch.io slash Joy Lancer. It's great, and we've got some big news about it coming up very soonish, actually. Oh, oh. It, can you give out can you give out codes for that? Like any sort of download links as like can you press a button and like give someone a link that will give them the game? Yeah. Um See, if you wanna very... send See, the if thing... you wanna send some of those to me, I will start distributing your game via my hand to build hype if you want. That would be beautiful. See, the great thing yeah. about itch.io is that it just has all these things built in, like, for developers to just do stuff, and, like, it's, it's, it's extra great because there's no, you don't have to, like, wait to have your game, like, approved by a moderator or things like that. You just, you just type in the name, you upload some files, and then it's live, and now you're selling it. Yeah, itch.io is amazing. Like, what it's, it's doing for indie distribution is crazy. I'm, I'm really but glad yeah. that it started blowing up as well. I, I, feel, I feel like maybe I might have had a hand in that with all the promotion that I did with it, you know, if you want to... Probably. Uh, but yeah, like that's been taking off really, really well. Uh, the person who owns it, Lifo, who is Moonscript on Twitter, is has been like the most like supportive person in like this like this whole thing. Like, like I I am pretty confident in saying that itch.io is the reason that I still have a career because it it's like it's so easy to just like get get someone to buy your game. The money goes like straight to you. And you don't have to worry about waiting for anything for the most part. It's just, it's it's amazing. And they take uh, no cut right now as well. So like if you so like if you sell a game, you pres you basically get all the money aside from like the usual like PayPal fees or credit card fees or anything like that. It takes. And they're like so down to work with you yeah, on anything. Like you can... If you're like, can you make this slightly different? I know it's not there. Like they they're just they're all over it. Yeah, like I think the the site itself launched last year. And, like, ever since then, now it's got, like, all these, it's got, like, multiple listing types. It's got, like, all this really great stuff with, like, it, like layouts and design. They have their own game jam system. They have a press system where, like, if you have a press, uh, if you have a press account, all you have to do is, like, like, you can, you can basically download any game for free that has, like, press accounts approved. 
So if you don't have a press account and you want to get some hands on some games and like maybe do some less plays, some reviews, anything like that, I would definitely look into getting yourself a press account because that opens like like all the unique games that you may or may not have seen on Warp Door on the other channel and all the games that we showed off are here are like are like super available on itch.io for like anybody. And if you get a press account, you can just download those and just like go through them and like review them. It's it's awesome. Can- Let's, hook, let's get hooked up with a press account after this, I think. Yeah, for sure. You, all, all of us. Oh, yeah, every okay. single one of us. I, I, actually, I actually did work on getting one. But, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's really great. It's one of those things that everyone definitely needs to be paying attention to. And if, you, if you're someone who's, like, on the fence on becoming a game developer because you're worried about, like, Steam and Desura and, like, Humble Bundle having, like, you know, a little bit of gatekeeping and all that, itch.io is pretty much for you because you can put, like, anything that you want there for the most part and, like, they, they don't care. Like, you can just put yeah, it it's there. Like, it's, it's like, like the awesome. band camp of games. It's That's, got a really great <laughs> storefront system with it, too. It's, it's really wonderful to work with. Yeah, it's just, it's just a really great thing in general. And like, especially if you like, even if you just like dabble around with code, like maybe you know some basic, just want to put together some silly little thing, like you can just do that, put it on there, sell it for literally whatever you want, and boom, you're in. You can even put it up for free with a with a pay what you want. Yeah, I've I've done that with a couple of my games as well. It's just it's all it's all really great stuff, and it just it shows how much farther we've gone as a community and how much farther we can go. Cause like I know I know um, Steam is working on uh, a more open storefront as well, so the the uh, the no gatekeeping bug is starting to spread, and I think that's going to be really good for the scene in general. Yeah, and then it like it gives rise to people who are very good at uh, collecting, like ba- basically making mixtapes with games, right? Like yeah. I um I I'm this person, I like this kind of thing. Uh, here are the games that I suggest. I, I think that they're a, a big solution to discoverability issues in indie. But do we have more people that that's like almost exclusively what they do? Plus, you know? plus, if you are a game developer, like at this point, literally nothing's stopping you from making like your own bundles with like your own games and stuff, or like your own experiments. So like, so like, I know some people would be like, oh, well, this game doesn't seem like it would be good enough to sell. But if you take five of those games, now you've got something to sell. Because like people, yeah. people want to see kind of stuff like that, and they want. To, I know, especially nowadays, people are wanting to see stuff really early in development and kind of watch it grow. Which is which is which has happened with Joy Lancer, which has worked to my advantage a lot. But we're having a panel on all of this already, um, sometime this week. So I'm not going to go too far into the details. But if you're interested in that kind of hint, thing, hint, hint. Yeah, if you're interested in that kind of thing, I would definitely recommend tuning in. We're, we're going to update the schedule sometime tonight, and then everyone can get acquainted with all that. But, yeah, it's it's almost 8 o'clock, so we're getting ready to turn down for a little bit, take a little break, figure out some more stuff to give to y'all. But big, huge, like amazingly huge ups to Slow Beef and Diabetes for agreeing to do Retsu Talk as, our, um, as one of our main events. No, well, well, thank again, you for having us. It was yeah, fun. absolutely. Really, uh, definitely. Big thank you to Zoe Quinn for answering my phone call and coming into here. Hey, it, it says a lot because I, I really hate talking on the phone, but I, I do too. I love you, man. <laughs> but every, every once in a while, you just have one of those friends that you can talk on the phone with, and that and that's what we yep. do. Uh, ah. Huge ups to J.E.B. Wrench. I don't know if he's still paying attention or not. Are you, are you here? I'm still here. Yeah, you, you and Allison of Indie Haven have done absolutely amazing work you've gotten in contact with an amazing amount of people in such a short amount of time you've really you've been doing like a bang-up job and i'm really glad that you guys are aboard with us well we just saw what looked like a great idea and decided to run with it so and and i'm glad to see it took off we appreciate it a lot because definitely we wouldn't have gotten as big as we have without your help and big ups big ups to spawn point who wrote about us big ups to rock paper shotgun nathan grayson wrote about us He's um, sitting right next to me. I can, I can. Yeah. Hey, Nathan. Yeah. They're saying thank you for writing the thing on Rock Paper Shotgun. It's your boy so, Tron, and I'm great. saying thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, and uh, thank you, know, you. Big ups to Austin for being around this whole time and helping me set up all these panels, coming up with all these ideas, getting in contact with Yo. people. You've you've done a great job. Solon's thank done you. a great job making sure everyone gets contacted with for like panels and stuff as well. 
taking all my emails when I was passed out on the couch, all that kind of stuff. Um, James Logical has been managing this stream the entire time. He, he's pretty much put all this technology together. As you can see, he's done an absolutely amazing job with all of it. Yeah. Like Logical is uh, some kind of TJ. wizard. Yeah, the presentation's just been off the charts constantly. Oh, TJ, though. What's up? You. What about me? I didn't do anything. You're awesome. I didn't, don't, don't look at me. <laughs> look at him. Look, look at him. Freak him out. Freak him out with kindness and appreciation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we're, uh, we're going to turn down for a second, go into intermission. We're going to figure out what we're going to do from here because we still got a solid hour of time. We did get some more people that arrived, so we could possibly do something with them here as well. So, you know, keep, keep an eye out. And I'll let you know when we've figured something out. But seriously, it, thank you to everybody who is in this podcast, honestly. We've also got some huge announcements coming up still. Like, the things that we were going to do before <laughs> Diabetes and Slow People were here, they're still here. Yeah, they're, they're still here. We're still going to do that. Um, there's I'm, more to the reveal? There's more yeah. to the reveal. But yeah, we're going we're gonna to take a break. We're going to figure out what we're going to do with uh, the rest of the time we have. Um, we, we will... Think about some night hours activities as well, because even though this show is ended after nine, we're all obviously going to be awake because we're on Pacific time, and we've got lots of stuff that we can show y'all after hours. The indie adult content. <laughs> Whoa. But, yeah. Th thank you, everyone, for joining, and we will be signing off now. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Good, good, good. Thank you guys so much. Wow. That was amazing. That was well, well done. Cool. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, thanks, thanks for letting me jump in the last second like that. You guys are the best. Had a wonderful day. Tired of hell. Got work tomorrow. Yeah. yeah I, Gave I gotta me go an to... excuse to not look at emails for a while. Yeah, I gotta go to a rap concert now. I'll see you guys later. Nice. Okay. Indie rap. Have fun for us. I will have so much fun for everybody. Thank you. <laughs> all right, all right. You're, uh, you're welcome.